Let's take a look at some of those sparks one more time. If you listen carefully, you can hear a click when one appears. Here's the spark chamber setup. You can see the chamber, some electronics, and a gas canister. Let's take a closer look. The actual spark chamber is a sealed box. You can see it's crossed with horizontal aluminium panels. A spark in the chamber will travel between these panels. Inside the chamber is a mixture of different gases. Remember, this is what gets ionized by the muons. This gas mixture comes from a canister and includes neon and argon, which give it that pink color. Then the gas mixture is fed into a chamber at the back with this tubing. Now, we only want the spark chamber to produce sparks when a particle passes through it. So we create a trigger that uses this pan of electronics below the chamber. To do this, we use a crystal of sodium iodide that scintillates or produces light when a particle ionizes it and attach the crystal to a device that converts the light into a signal. Now we've placed this special detector, the crystal and the other, both above and also below our spark chamber. Electrical signals from the crystal detector then get fed into an electronic unit that sends a trigger if both fire at the same time. This is known as a coincidence unit. Okay, so let's go over this again with an example. A muon flies in from the top of the screen. The muon ionizes the top crystal, producing light, and continues through the chamber, leaving a trail of ions in its wake. At the same time, the light is converted to an electrical signal that travels down a wire to the coincidence unit. The particle leaves the chamber and ionizes the bottom crystal, which also sends a signal to the coincidence unit. Since two signals have arrived, the coincidence unit sends a trigger to the high voltage unit and turns it to turn on. The aluminium plates then produce an arc of electricity that travels through the ion trail like a path. And you can see that the ammeter in the bottom also measures an electric current when this happens. But what about this particle coming in now? It ionizes the crystal at the bottom of the detector and the spark chamber, but because it doesn't pass through the top crystal, the high voltage is not triggered and no tracks are seen. So now you know how the spark chamber works. Next, we'll be talking about detectors that use liquids and solids as the ionizing medium instead of gases.